Well, hello, Tyke, Carolyn. Thank you so much for joining me today on my Wedding Tip Wednesday podcast. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jenny. Love you to be here. Well, Tyke is the general manager from Tancred's Town House. And Tancred's Town is one of my very favourite venues to work in. And you all love me down there, don't you, Tyke? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you say that to everybody. <laughs> well, Tyke, I want to go through all of the questions today. Um, I suppose that couples would ask you when they arrive at Tancred's Town, um, sure. when they're viewing Tancred's Town for the very first time. Sure. Um, and I'm sure they don't leave Tancred's Town without wanting to book you anyway. So um, I want to go through things that, you know, um, couples should know before uh, they arrive at the hotel and what they should be asking. Yeah, absolutely. OK, so Tyg, first of all, I suppose um, they need to find out before they go near you um, if the venue is available for their date. Yes, absolutely. That's always essential. And we're uh, we're fabulously busy at the minute. So dates are dates are in high demand. So when you say high demand, right, um, if somebody's looking at 2023, have they got a hope? <laughs> There's always hope. <laughs> Never rule hope out. And we'll certainly do our very best to always make sure that we get some date that'll yeah. resemble the image that they have of their original wedding. Yes. And I'm sure, um, you know, going back to COVID, even though I hate the bloody word at this stage, um, you have had a bloody nightmare rescheduling people. It was exciting. <laughs> That's the politest word you could use for it. Um, it was very uncertain. Like we were all in the same boat as everybody else. We yeah. only got the information at the very last moment when the announcement came out. Yeah. And then between ourselves and there was so few of us through no fault of our own. Yes. That we had to make a plan, come up with an idea and then deliver it the very best way we could to our couples. Yeah. Meaning that we had the information at the very last minute and had to act rapidly to come wow. up with something to help our couples. Yeah. Because we fully understood how difficult it was for the couples. Of course. It was the uncertainty. It was the fear. It was the upset. And we had to try and do something to mitigate against that. Yeah. So, you, so you've so you kind of put counsellor onto your CV now as well. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and thankfully you were able to look after 99.9% um, .9 of those couples. Yeah. We did. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah of um, course. No, couples were fantastic. They they rallied with us and we bounced back. And yeah. even if it wasn't a day of the week that they originally had or the month that they originally had, we were able to work something out between ourselves to make sure that um, everybody was happy at the end of the day. Yeah. And then what did you do with that time? I saw a little bit of um, construction work happening down in Tankistan the last time I was there. You've, you've, you've made more bedrooms and spaces, haven't you? We certainly had. We had an old stable block on the estate that used to be rooms for the workers on the estate. Yeah. So it was run down um, accommodation. Yes. So what we did was a lick of paint and a little bit of a, a little yeah. bit of fancy wallpaper. I'd say it was a bit more of a lick of paint <laughs> now, Tyke. <laughs> uh, fancy wallpaper, and we just um, repurposed an existing building into yes. a into into a new life. Wow. I mean, Tankerstown is absolutely stunning, but that it just looks amazing. That kind of barn area where you pull in at the car park there. It certainly looks does. I have to go down and stay the night. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so I suppose when a couple are coming to Tankerstown and they want to book. You know, there's things that they have to bear in mind. Are there like a minimum amount of guests that they have to have to book Tankard's Town or not? Yes. yes. Um, different days of the week carry different minimum numbers. Go on, tell So me more. the likes of a Saturday would have a minimum number of 140 people. Friday's yes. 120 and then Thursday is 80 people. Okay. All other days of the week then carry a minimum of 50 people. Of 50 people. But I, I'd say you get 50 people very seldom, do you? Very seldom, very yeah. seldom, but they are fabulous events and the room does lend itself perfectly to both 50 people, 80 people, 120, 250 people. Yes. It's a fantastic room. I know I'm biased. Yes, but I'm um, biased too, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it does lend itself perfectly and the room's very dynamic in the way it's laid out and it's it can be all things to every people. Yes, and if somebody wants to get married in Tankardstown, talk me through that if they want to get married on site. Um, two main options, um, one being outside during the summer months. Yes. Now, saying summer months, we have done outside <laughs> ceremonies in October, February. You know, it's we'll do whatever our couples want. Yes. Um, the main use of the orangery would be for the dinner. So yes. we try and keep as few ceremonies in there as possible. So outside is obviously preferable. Yeah, of course. Ireland being Ireland and the weather being what it is, we do end up doing our ceremonies in the orangery as well. Yes. And um, I have done several of them in um, the orangery. And I, I, do you know what? I actually find it amazing. 
um, when I go back in that evening and it's all set for dinner and you'd never think there was a ceremony a few hours ago. It is funny. Um, you do have people that come down the stairs and we're chatting with them as they come in the room and helping them to their table. And they say, oh, wow, this is very similar to the, this is very similar to the ceremony room. <laughs> so it is great that people don't think or don't get the impression that they're in the same room again. Yeah. Yeah. It is lovely that the room can, you know, have a complete dual, dual personality. Yeah, it looks completely different, doesn't it? it certainly um, does. Both ends of the day. Um, so what's included then in a wedding package? Is there, is there, you know, have you got several different ones or? Yes. 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 That's, this is where it gets complicated. Oh, great. Come on, I have all day. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be in trouble with the sales team for <laughs> giving false information. Um, different packages obviously apply to different times of the year to seasonality of our local produce, to um, demand and so on. Sure. Um, so there's a specific package that applies to each time of the year. Okay. But then outside of the specific package, there's upgrade packages. Right. Um, you know, additional arrival drinks, um, different types of canapes, you know, a, a fillet steak and sir, opposed to sirloin steak, champagne instead of Prosecco. You know, there's loads of different add-ons right. as such. that can, Okay. You can really personalize your package. Yes. And then, Ty, you know, when you go to kind of like a hotel, I mean, I love wedding venues because, you know, it's yours and you're, not, you're not mingling with people you don't know in the day. Of course. Um, What's the story then? You know, do you, you know, do you have your um, extended bar later on then or do they have to be gone at a certain time? Are you allowed to say? <laughs> <laughs> um, we're very lucky that when you get married in Tankistan, Tankistan is yours. Yes. Um, it's your home for the day. So you um, you really should treat it like your home for the day. Aww. And um, no one tells you what time to go to bed in your own house. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it really is a home, isn't it? It's great. Well, it is. It is a family home at yeah. the very end of the day. Um, yeah. the, our owning family. It's it's there. It's where the the kids grew up. It's where, um, the owners live. So it it does yeah. lend itself perfectly. You don't walk in and feel like it's a big, vast, yes. old country house. Um, it feels homely. The yeah. rooms are. It's warm. It's inviting. It um, it feels like a family home. And tell me, um, so you were saying that they grew up there. And on Christmas Day, do they celebrate Christmas there? Or? Absolutely. Do Absolutely. They, they have their Christmas dinner there. Absolutely. Stop the lights. It's I didn't still, know uh, that. It's still very much a it's very much the heart of a heart wow. of a family. Oh my goodness me. Well, I always feel like when I arrive at Tankers Day, you could go into any of the, one of those rooms. And it does feel like you're in Absolutely. somebody's gaff. <laughs> <laughs> um is there another event scheduled for your room at a different time during the same day? So basically, um, Tankerstown is just for your wedding. Absolutely. So there's no other event that can happen in Tankerstown House on the day of your wedding. It's just all yours. Absolutely. But you do have a little restaurant around the back. Tell us more about that. We have a fabulous little um, Brabazon, Brabazon yeah. restaurant. Yes. And um, we're very lucky. We're just at the very end stages of an extension onto the Brabazon restaurant. Wow. Um, we've added on another lovely orangery glass room we're calling the Morris Suite. Wow. Um, and that's to cater for, for again, to our local community yes. to bring people into the public area of the estate. Now, right. not to get confused, it's entirely separate to the main house and yeah. there's no way that people can cross paths. But um, it's to help um, our breakfast trade as well in the sense that since we've added on our new bedrooms, things are getting a little tight in our existing restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just to try and make sure that everyone can sit together, that we don't need to do breakfast slots to, you know, split your party the next morning after your wedding. Yes. That all your guests can come down and have breakfast together. Amazing. Meaning that you almost have a, a day two before day two starts. Amazing. And then, you know, with your accommodation down in Tankardstown, how many can you keep on site um, tag. The moment we can sleep, 114. Wow. Like so, that's um, amazing. But if you have 150, where do they go? Who they're like? Um, we're very lucky that um, we have a great association with some of our properties in the area. Yes. Meaning then that through the uses of shuttle buses and local taxi companies, we can make sure that all your guests are accommodated within two to three minutes of Tankerstown itself. Amazing. Oh, wow. And then, you know, uh, um, and I come across this all the time when the bride wants to get ready on site. Now, I know that you're very busy down there with weddings. Um, so if you've got a wedding from the day before, Ty, and you've got tomorrow's wedding, who wants to get re uh, ready down there? What happens? Do you have an area now? Um, we do now. This yes. was something where um, we couldn't accommodate our brides for years and yes. we listened to our couples and responded and we had a lovely old, it used to be a coffee shop yes. in the Brabazon courtyard area yes. and we converted it into our secret garden uh, bridal prep room. 
Wow. So that's available from 6 a.m. the morning of your wedding. You arrive and it takes all the pressure or as much pressure as we can (laughs) off the bride in the sense that everybody comes to her. Her hair, her makeup, everything then comes to the bride, meaning that she doesn't need to do any running around, no pressure, no nothing. And there's wow. a there's prosecco to calm the nerves as well. <laughs> <laughs> we always need glass of prosecco. <laughs> and then, like, so if she t- takes all of her, you know, stuff down, like her dress and all her bits and pieces, she keeps it in that room. Then, um, and any other stuff that she has belonging to her, what happens to that? Then, I suppose when the other wedding moves out, do you just absolutely? Take, yeah. So the idea is whether the um, couple are using the room to get ready and they're getting married later on in Tankerstown or heading off to their church they'll simply move into the prep room for the morning of the wedding. Right. They'll do whatever they need to do and head off to their respective ceremony. Okay. And then we'll come down, tag up all your luggage, you know, put it all away, unpack your bags, all that'll be done for you. Oh my God. And all your couples are amazing. Have you had any bridezilla stuff? Never. Never in Tankerstown. <laughs> never in Tankerstown. <laughs> no, like You have to tell the never, truth there. Never. <laughs> no, we're very, we're very, very lucky. We have fabulous yeah. couples that come through and... Yes. Um, we're we're honoured that they decided to get married in Tankerstown and um, it's it'll be forever, forever their home. Oh, and, you know, I often kind of um, hear couples talking afterwards about, you know, I'd, I'd meet them at weddings and stuff. Of course. They go back for their year anniversary. Yes. And again, that's a fabulous thing that our restaurant can accommodate. Yeah. Um, you know, a night that we don't have a wedding, we're perfectly happy and delighted to open up as a normal country house venue in the yeah. sense that you can come you can relax, you can dine in our restaurant, you can have a drink in one of our large drawing rooms and just walk the estate. Stop. It's a it's a perfect romantic getaway. And if it's your year anniversary, all the better. Oh, and you know what I love? The, the piped music that you um, put through th- those trees. That's very, very romantic, Tyg. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a great idea, <laughs> if we do say idea. so ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> There's all this kind of, what type of music would you say it is now, Tyg? Um, the couples get a choice. So whether they go for something like Frank Sinatra or just a string quartet set, but it is lovely when guests are getting out of the car at the front of the house and the staff are taking out the, the bags and we're parking cars for them and so on to take the pressure off that yeah. there's music in the background. It gives a it gives a, a gravitas to the day. It's unbelievable. I'll never forget my first time down there going, this is magic. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I, it is definitely, definitely one of my favourite venues. Um, and then Tyke, in terms of suppliers, you know. <laughs> you Our favourite photographer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, being Jenny McCarthy. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so when you are, I always think that orange tree where they have their meal, nothing needs to be done to it because it's such a beautiful, stunning room and you always do it up lovely. But you would get florists in, wouldn't you, um, doing up the room? Tell me more. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we work with a great, uh, a wide variety of uh, suppliers and florists and videographers and everything. Yes. And um, we've seen some fabulous people through the doors over the years. And um, we are lucky that the room does require very little. Yes. Um, you know, we have a fantastic crushed linen tablecloth with an antique candelabra and so on. So it does require very little. Yeah. So everything that a couple put on top of that is basically them expressing their own personality. Yes. So yeah. whether they like the florals or just uh, straight greenery or whether they want to go for something more artistic on the table, it's just an expression of their own individuality at that sure. stage. Sure. And you don't want to do too much to it because you don't no. want to take away from the room. It's just so beautiful. Um, and you've got a lovely florist that you love dealing with, Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie from French Touch. She's uh, she's one of our all time favourites. Oh, she's so I'm going I'm going to try and get Stephanie on um, this wedding. to You really should. She, you really should. But her stuff is just incredible. Isn't she's it? fantastic. And she's the perfect balance between professional whilst also being fantastically good fun with both ourselves and the couple alike. Yes. We've never had a couple that came in and weren't absolutely crazy yeah. about Stephanie. She's yeah. absolutely amazing. And she, she's she's French, so I love her accent. Isn't she's it? fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> she's absolutely fantastic. And um, then you have Justin, obviously, her uh, her partner that works alongside yeah. her. The two of them do it as a, as a double act. Yes. And they're just, they're a fantastic combo. Now, I don't know if I've met Justin. Is he as funny as Stephanie now? He's quieter than Stephanie. All oh, right, okay. he's quieter than Stephanie. <laughs> Ying and Yang, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. But um, no, genuinely, um, they've done some fantastic stuff with us over the years. Yes. Now we've had 
all our photo- all our flowers are fabulous. Yeah. But um, just when you mention Stephanie, she's she's truly fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I definitely we, we're going to try a lot to Absolutely. I say, Tyke said you'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me about um, Tankerstown. Um, I get asked this a lot with wedding venues. Um, I've not seen a lift there. Is there a lift there? There's not. Um, but it is accessible um, if you need, you know, if completely. you've got somebody who's disabled, it is accessible, isn't it? It certainly is. It's completely yeah. accessible. Yeah. Um, we are restricted in the sense of our old building that we're not allowed to, you know, chop floors out and add it to yes, lift. of course. But what we have done is through the outside landscaping, um, there's a full, completely paved, flat path that brings you from the main house right down into the orange room itself. Yes. And equally, there's um, an estate car that will transport guests from one end of the estate to the other. Yeah. Do you know, obviously, Ireland being Ireland, if it's raining. If it's raining. Yeah. What if it's snowing? Tag. It never snows. <laughs> we did don't you, talk about the did, snow. Did you look out the window today, love? <laughs> it was very close. It was very close. Um, every time it snows, I think we all get flashbacks to, yeah. what was it, 2015? You have to talk to me. I, I was talking to Tag very recently behind the scenes, wasn't I, Tag? And we, we were. were t- tell me, tell we me, were. tell me. <laughs> um, during that bad snow, we were supposed to have a wedding on the Friday and the Saturday. Right. And um, obviously, uh, we were all planning to go ahead and, you know, we'd made great plans with our couples and everyone was staying strong. <laughs> and then after the terrible storm on the Thursday, um, our poor couple on the Friday had to unfortunately postpone their wedding. Um, right. But now we got a fabulous date in July and the sun was splitting the stones. So they were absolutely <laughs> delighted. Um, the bride and groom for Saturday um, were in the area anyway. Right. Um, so they were all set to go and they were traveling, I think, from Limerick off the top of my head. So okay. they were in the area for a few days. They were making a week of it. Yeah. And they were staying in a fabulous local B&B around the corner. And the issue was then that the there was about 15 people staying in the B&B and obviously they needed to be to be fed, to be honest. And the poor lady Eileen in the B&B had no, obviously, food to cater for that sheer number of people Stop. over the days. I was staying in Tankerstown and I had loads of food and no guests. Oh. So the issue we had then was we were trying to get food from Tankerstown to College Hill, being the little B&B. <laughs> and... This was all going well, so I took my own car out, which is a normal car, and that yeah. was, you know, <laughs> swiftly abandoned because I couldn't get it going. Um, we have a, a little estate van for transporting linen and so on, so I tried to get that out, and it got further than my car did, but that was <laughs> that was swiftly abandoned. So the next only available option was a wheelbarrow. <laughs> So there, there are some fantastic, there's fantastic pictures. I must see, can I find them? Of me setting out on my journey, you know, wheelbarrow laden down with, with frozen fruit and whatnot and walked. It's probably, it's probably a mile. <laughs> it felt like 10 miles with my wheelbarrow. Oh my God, almighty. Oh but um, yeah, so... Hence the flashbacks every time we see snow. And were they very grateful that you came down with your wheelbarrow? They were fabulous. They were fabulous, actually. And um, I think I got to mention the speech. Oh, my God. Well, that was the least you deserved. (laughs) (laughs) So talk to me then. When... um, Couples come to view Tankardstown, um, Tyke, you know, for the very first time, sure. they've never been there. What can they expect? Um, they'll get a designated um, wedding coordinator, which yeah. will meet them at the front door. You know, we'll have tea, coffee, chat about the whole Tankardstown experience and what they can expect from the very get-go. Yes. We'll have a quick run through dates so everyone knows what we have and we can know exactly what we're looking for. Right. And it means then that whilst we're doing the actual tour of the estate, we can be talking about specific packages to specific times of the year that the couples are actually interested in. Yes. So you'll come through, we'll show you through the whole ground floor of the house, you know, we'll stroll through the large drawing rooms, which is the main area where your drinks reception itself will happen. Yeah. We'll have a look at the terrace where our smokers and... um, our outside entertainment and our ice cream carts, they can all be set up on the terrace. Sure. Um, we do fabulous in-house ice cream um, mm. where our chef will actually prepare um, homemade ice cream with your individual toppings and we'll serve it in on the estate itself, which is fabulous. Stunning. Um, we have a lovely little honesty bar where guests will come in and it's small by, it is a small little bar, but it's small by it's design. Gorgeous. Um, because the whole idea is your guests come in, they'll grab a drink and then they'll head straight back out into the drinks reception. Yeah. Because, you know, it's during a drinks reception that all your guests get to mingle and actually get to know one another. Yeah. And then you make the actual, you know, uh, temporary friendships <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that you're going to, that you're going to foster and, <laughs> and enjoy day. for the rest of the day. <laughs> um, we'll then bring you down into the orangery, which is the, which is the, 
main part of the whole the whole Tankerstan experience. Yes. And we'll show you around the different types of bars down there. We'll talk you through the different types of offering we have, the breakout rooms where the two little decision rooms where you have your where you have your dinner. And the chats with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and again, you know, we've said it before, those rooms work perfectly for any guests that want to get away from the music. Yes. Um, any, you know, more senior guests that want to just have a have a chat away from the noise and the hustle and the bustle. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we'll have a look at uh, some of our rooms. Okay. Um, we've done great things in the last couple of years, obviously, with the benefit of technology. And we have VR videos yes. that'll take you around Tankerstown in a full 360 um, immersive experience. My God. Um, which helped us hugely throughout the whole um, the whole COVID thing. Yes. Um, meaning that we could continue to try and, you know, uh, best best yeah. show Tankerstan yes. in wedding viewings when we were doing them remotely through Zoom it was a it was a it was a new way of doing things a new way of doing it things it certainly was yeah 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 and then they just de- they just de- decide then before they go or did they decide afterwards and put the um, booking fee down or the way we do it is if a couple is happy or mm-hmm. thinks they're happy to proceed they can hold whatever date they wish for yes. 7 days no strings attached yeah um, and then throughout those seven days, we'll follow up with them and send them any extra information they need, whether it's a full list of menu options, a full list of accommodations, whatever they need. Sure. At the end of the seven days, they can either decide to go ahead and confirm or, you know, they can regretfully decide mm. not to proceed with Tankerstown. I wouldn't say that happens very often. Or... We're lucky enough that it doesn't. <laughs> we are very lucky. <laughs> and then do you recommend people to them? Do they ever say, oh, can you recommend a florist? Can you recommend yes, a indeed. cake person? Yeah. Indeed. And I... the way we do it is we have a recommended suppliers list. Um, no, the, we have no affiliation with our suppliers, as yes. you well know. Yeah. Um, but it means that we know that they'll give our couples the very best experience and the very best service that um, that they deserve. Yeah, yeah. And they deserve it too. And they certainly do. Yes. Um, decorations. Do anybody ever, I mean, I would not ever, ever see decorations up in Tankardstown, but do they ever ask you, can they put them up? In terms of Christmas decorations yeah, or... or like, you know, d- different things. You know, I mean, I've, I've often seen sort of um, um, photo booths later on that night. Do they ever ask you to do anything odd <laughs> um, during the drinks reception? Not really. Do you know, no. it'd be a, it'd a donut wall would be the, would yeah. be the height of what we'd yeah. normally see. Yes. Um, no, we don't, to be fair, because like, as we said, the, that rooms really don't need anything. Yeah. Yeah, we do see some lawn games on a on a day two barbecue in the middle of the summer. Do you know? Yes. Outside of that, and you know really. what I'd say, it kind of would lend itself to lawn games because you have the space down there. <laughs> we certainly do. <laughs> we could have we could have a few football pitches of lawn, but um, no, it's lovely. You see them on a day two. Do you know the sun's yes. out? They're having a lovely drink and reminiscing about the day before on the terrace. Yeah, and then whether they're playing football or do you know the inflatable basketball rings? Do you know yes. there's, there's loads of options. Yeah, yeah. I remember one of my trips down to Tankerstown. God, a few years ago. <laughs> and anybody who's gotten married in Tankerstown will know Fran. Absolutely. We, we love Fran. I got great crack out of Fran. Um, but this couple decided that they wanted to land in a helicopter. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm arriving in the helicopter. I don't like helicopters, by the way. I'm always terrified getting into them. But anyway, sometimes I have to and I have no choice. Absolutely. And I'm landing and I could see Fran looking and then he spots me and he went, only you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then um, one of the things I wanted to ask you were cakes. So <laughs> the face on you. <laughs> Obviously, you have some companies that you really like to deal with. But have you ever seen anything that's absolutely nuts in terms of a cake? Not really. Um, we only we only <laughs> chatted. Too nice today. <laughs> <laughs> we only chatted about this the other day. Um, yeah. We don't see anything um, wild, wild in terms of um, yeah. our cakes. You know, the idea of years gone by where couples had seven, eight, ten tiers over yeah. trellises and so on. That's we don't see that anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, now we do work with fabulous people, so you we're do. doing. We're dealing with the very, very best. You're dealing um, with the very best and, and the cakes that I see down there are just unbelievable. But I have seen mad cakes over the years where, you know, it's one, if you look at it from the front, it's one type of cake. If you look at it from the side, it's another type of cake, you know, Absolutely. Um, stuff hanging out. But I've never seen anything <laughs> like that in Tankerstown. Um, alcohol, does the venue have a liquor license to say, to, yeah, well, yes, of course you have a liquor license. But if they wanted to bring in their own um, alcohol, uh What's the story? Do they ever want to do that? Um, some people do. 
Um, yeah. Obviously, as a venue, um, we naturally have to charge a corkage fee. Yes. So it does It does really depend. And I'd give this straight recommendation to a couple if they asked. Yeah. Um, if you're bringing in a specific type of alcohol, as in a very high-end alcohol, yes. it makes perfect sense to purchase it at a reduced price, whether it's in France or wherever that the couple are sourcing it from, and then pay a corkage fee. Sure. However, if they're bringing in a, you know, a normal Sauvignon Blanc that I drink myself yes. on a Saturday night, you know, there's very little benefit by the time that you purchase it here, you pay the corkage fee. Yeah. You know, we would have a very comparable Sauvignon Blanc at a redu- at a lesser price right. on our own menu. Yeah. So it's always... It sounds like a good idea, yeah. But it's not always um, it's not always the best idea. Yeah. Do you prefer when you don't have to do that? <laughs> <laughs> He's like Jenny. Jenny, I don't have to do that. <laughs> um, in terms of service, it makes it makes very little difference to the right. to the to the house team. Yes. Um, but um, look, if it's whatever the couple wants, we'll uh, we'll certainly make sure it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do they ever ask if they bring their own food? We do get that sometimes, um, yes. just in terms of own like uh, niche offerings that the couple might have for their own yes. personal lives that they like. Um, we don't actually allow any food we brought onto the estate, with yes. the exception of, you know, a confectionery items such as a cake or a, a donut, donut wall. wall. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. It's it's for the safety of on four, yeah. and I, and it is a difficult. It's a difficult. It's difficult information to have to give a couple sometimes yes. because they their heart set on some form of an outside vendor. Sure. And it's it's not pleasant to have to, to yeah, give them the bad news. But you know something, Tyg, I totally get where you're coming from. Like if you're after booking your wedding in Tankerstown House, you know, the food, I just know even from being a supplier eating down there, the food is just unbelievable. Um, so I, I get that, you know, and your chefs are unbelievable. There, we have a fantastic team. Yes. We have a fantastic team and Owen, our executive chef, is he's with us a great number of years and we're, we're truly very lucky to have him. Yeah. Truly very lucky to have him. So DJs and bands, you know, <laughs> I know, listen, the bane <laughs> of my life, I'm just be honest with, with you now, right? It drives me nuts when, you know, everything is finished and tables have to be cleared away and a band has to come in and they have to set up and it's like an hour and a half later. Is there an easier way around that? It depends on your size of your wedding and again, the image that you have for your room. Yeah. Um, we keep all our guests in the room whilst we're changing around. Yes. And what we'll do is we'll just move tables a foot here, a foot there, yeah. whilst the whilst the guests and the couple are in the room. Right. Now, the, you'll never know we're doing it. It's just done in the background. We have it We have it down to a fine art you at this do. stage. And we have a double doors um, off stage left as such where the band normally set up. Yes. So we'll liaise with the band during the, the remainder of the speeches or the remainder of the dinner and we'll bring all the gear into those double doors, yes. meaning that there's no dragging or lifting and it's a, it's a flat load level as well, meaning it makes it an awful lot easier for bands to actually they bring just, their gear in. Yeah, they just walk in. Exactly, Yeah. exactly. But um, unfortunately, there's not a, there's not an easier way. Yeah, there's not an easier way. <clears throat> it's just it can be in other hotels. I know you're not a hotel, but in, in hotels, it's just sometimes so obvious where they're in and lifting the table and moving them here and it's just oh god and and it just takes so long for a band to set up then you know I just nearly feel that that time is wasted Um, but there's great ideas that you can do during that time Um, yes we'd always recommend and we think it's a great idea again weather permitting that you do your first dance in the wall garden Lovely. We've a like you said, the trees are piped with a Bose sound I've never, system. I've never done that when I was down there. It's fantastic and it Stop. works fabulously. And if the couple then tally it up with a sparkler shot, yes. what they get then is uh, we'll do a circle of lanterns in the middle of the garden, in between four big trees. The music's piped through the through the trees. You know, you you des- designate your own um, first dance song. You do it in the garden. We light up sparklers at the last minute. Yeah, fabulous photo shot. Yes. It gets everyone out of the room and gets everyone over that after dinner slump. Yes. And then we'll have done that just as your band is nearly ready to go. Yeah. So as we bring everyone back into the orangery, your band starts playing. Brilliant. So it means then that all of a sudden, almost 100% of your guests are on their feet and on the dance floor by default. Yes. Meaning and they're that, ready to go, you see. And it starts. And the yeah. whole party starts immediately. It works. Yeah. Um, it, it always works a treat. It's a treat. It always and, works a treat. And I have to laugh at Fran. <laughs> <laughs> His sparklers. <laughs> you have to tell them about what he what he lights them up. It frightens the life out of me. With I hope this the thing. I hope the insurance isn't listening. <laughs> um, obviously, there's a there's a, a right and a wrong way, and there's also a a, a quick and easy way to yeah. do things. 
<laughs> so the worst thing, and I know you you know yourself, is yeah. lighting sparklers is how, how long it takes. Yes. So you're lighting one off the other and people are taking out matches and so on. Oh, and it's disaster, a nightmare. Disaster. Disaster. So Fran has a... Fran has a... A blowtorch. A, a blowtorch. <laughs> I was trying to find a better word for it, but it's a it's a blowtorch. <laughs> like, oh, you, no, I'm not going near the blowtorch. People put in 15 sparklers together and he just goes, and the whole lot light up hello. Um, Fran is fully trained in fire he's, safety. He's fully trained, isn't he? Yeah. There is an easy way to do sparklers um, in some ways. People think, oh, you just light them and hold them in the air. Oh, Jesus, absolutely. It has to be done properly. Absolutely. Let's talk about this, um, Tig, because I've had an incident. I won't mention the hotel, but I remember this woman. Um, she was an auntie of the groom and she came along and she said, I'll help you give, give those out. And she takes a, a, a huge um, batch of sparklers off me. And I thought, oh, she's very nice going to give out one to each person. I would only ever give one to each person. Of course. Because otherwise it can be dangerous. She lit them all together. And as the bride and groom were walking through, um, she had this kind of <laughs> furnace. You know, it was like a furnace <laughs> and there were flames coming and I had to stop the whole thing. And I thought, Jesus, her veil could have gone on of fire. Course. <clears throat> so you have to be careful with sparklers. You certainly do. And I think sometimes the idea of getting all of your guests outside with sparklers um, is as good and all as it is on paper. Yeah. It can be very messy on the day. Yeah. Yeah. You're nearly better off picking a core group of either friends or just yeah. your bridal party and then you have full control. Yeah. How many would you recommend, Tyke? 20 at I, best. Yeah. 20 I'd at best. Yeah. Because from I know from even yourself from a photo a photo point of view, yeah. there's only so many angles that you can capture yeah. all your guests at. Yeah. So it's only you're only ever going to see about 20 of your people as you're walking through the line or even later on in pictures. Exactly. So this business of getting 140 people outside <laughs> with sparklers is not a good idea. It really isn't. Please don't be buying 140 really sparklers. Isn't. You're going to set fire to the place. <laughs> and on buying sparklers, they need to be long sparklers. They do. They really do. Do you know? And it's through no fault of any any couples. You no. know, they're buying sparklers and they obviously haven't done it before. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Through no fault of their own. Yeah. And they come and the sparkler is the same size as a pen. <laughs> so you have, you know, you have max nine, ten <laughs> seconds of a sparkle. So, and it just, it doesn't, um, it doesn't give the, the right atmosphere. No, no, definitely not, you know. Or, you know, if if you do get more than 20 people out and you've got 50 people and you've Absolutely. got these tiny little sparklers, Absolutely. they're gone out before you get them all lit, you know. The it's couple a end up running, you know, they're out, they're out of breath by the get to the end of the line. <laughs> I've got some amazing sparkler shots, but I'll tell you, you want to see my duds. <laughs> <laughs> and then what time does it all finish at? Or, or, or do weddings, do, does it depend on the wedding? It depends on the wedding. Yeah. Um, they'll finish any time from half one right up until 4 a.m. Yeah. Um, everything must be closed up, you know, doors, everyone, all guests by 4 a.m. OK. Um, music must stop by half three and then the bar itself will close at four. OK. But, you know, some it's very rare that a DJ will play the whole way until half three. Yeah, so it's like very late. It's very it? late. Yeah. It's very late. So what we would recommend is that you're, you would actually do your own little playlist. Right. So that when your DJ stops normally at half one, two o'clock, yeah. that you'd have something to carry you on until half three. Okay. Because, yeah. and you know, you have given it to the TT team or wherever you're getting married, that team, during the day meaning then that they'll play it as soon as your DJ stops. Right. So everyone will remain on the floor and keep your wedding going and the buzz going yes. for as basically as long as you can. OK. And then in terms of kind of cleaning up the whole place, Ty, what happens? I want to know behind the scenes stuff here now, right? So like you could go down today and you go down the same time tomorrow and it's as spotless as it was yesterday. Do you have an overnight crew that come in? Um, we have a fantastic um, housekeeping and accommodation department. Yeah. And we are lucky in the sense that the orangery um, isn't used again until our wedding the next day. Right. Meaning that when the wedding today leave, um, there's no, you know, it's it's empty as yes. much and can be thoroughly deep cleaned and set to go again for whenever our next wedding is. Sure. Okay. Uh, it would be different if we had to do breakfast in it the next day or anything like that. Sure. We would need, a, you know, we'd need nearly a 24 hour cleaning team. Yes. Yeah. Whereby we are lucky that by having breakfast elsewhere, we can we can keep a sole use for the orangery and keep it looking its very best. And, you know, I often think, you know, when they go down to the orangery, the orangery in Tangestown, oh God, it's, it is definitely the nicest um, wedding venue ever, honestly. And I photograph everywhere. <laughs> um, can they go back upstairs then later on into the into the house or do they bother? 
Um, we have been asked this in the past, and to be to be honest, uh, we close off upstairs in yeah. the main house. Yes, and a lot of that is to actually stop your party from fracturing right. during the day. You know, we've all been to weddings where there's you know forty people on the dance floor, and then the rest of the room looks empty. Yeah, you walk into different sitting rooms, and there's twenty here, twenty there, I know, twenty. That's there. a nightmare. Whereby at least by us closing off the room upstairs, everybody comes downstairs and then your whole party is together for the entire night. That's such a good idea. And it actually keeps the wedding and the whole buzz of the event going for such, you know, for a far longer time yes. than it would if all your guests were splitting up into their, you know, their, their subgroups as yes. such. And then Ty, do you allow fireworks down there? Um, we do. We have one recommended company that we work with very well. Right. And they have a fantastic show and it ranges from anywhere from, I think, three minutes right up until 15 minutes. Depends on how much money you have. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, it's something that we only started getting involved in probably relatively recently. We're right. probably only maybe two years into working with this company. So we've probably only had them on the estate maybe 10 to 12 times but they are they are fantastic Right and then <clears throat> are you only allowed to have fireworks a certain amount of time across the year do you need planning permission for it or um, The company that we work with do all that for the couple oh, and on behalf of ourselves as well oh, Amazing um, You have to get a permit to actually be able to bring the fireworks down set them up and start the display Right But then there also needs to be some liaising with um, the aviation authorities as well yeah. to make sure that there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's no conflict yeah. and um, our idea for using this company is that it's you know they're they're fantastic and they yes. control all of that yeah um, do you want to give me the name of the company they are pyrotechnics Py what are they called pyrotechnics pyrotechnics oh they'd be delighted with us now <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even know how expensive it is to have fireworks but I'm seeing an awful lot of them lately they're very popular now yeah. and to be fair I, I don't have a clue how much they are yeah yeah, yeah. thankfully because thankfully. Okay. <laughs> there's nothing to do with you and do you think even I, I mean I I have a wedding coming up now um, over Christmas time and they're going to do the whole fireworks thing. And I think that whole, what we just spoke, spoke about there, about the band setting up Absolutely. and everything, that's a lovely thing it's to do. Idea. You know, because you're getting everybody outside and by the time you go back inside, it's dance time. Yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah. Great, great idea. Yeah, yeah. And it's lovely kind of photo ops as well. It certainly yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> so have you any other little tips to give couples, um, Ty, when they're, when they're booking their wedding venue? Um, what should they be asking? What should they be looking for? The famous old question of speeches. Ooh, the the controversy of speeches <laughs> and when they should happen. <laughs> um, I can, and I'm speaking from a non-speaker's point of view. Yes. So obviously um, I don't, you know, we're not taking into account the pressure and of trying course. to enjoy your dinner and of so course. on. But from, a, from an overall day point of view, it yes. really makes so much more sense to do your speeches at the very end of the meal. After the meal. And it's purely because if you do your speeches at the end of the meal, you know, your guests sit down, they enjoy their, their full meal. Then they have their tea and coffee and whatever the, the remnants of their drinks. Yes. And then they sit down and they listen to fabulous speeches for yeah. whether 15 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever the case may be. Yes. And then we start moving tables and getting the whole dance floor ready and the party starts. Yes. The alternative is you do them at the start of the meal. You, yeah. Then you have your, your speeches. We go through your meal. And then whilst they're on their tea and coffee, they're going to feel that we are now moving the tables quite abruptly whilst right. they're still enjoying their tea and coffee. Oh, I know what you mean. And through no fault of anyone's, it just feels a little bit more rushed. Right. Because we're still on the same time frame that we worked with our couple. Sure. So the band need to say be in at half eight to be playing at nine and so on and so on. Yeah. So we need to start moving tables. Okay. Whilst guests feel that they still need 20 minutes, half an hour just to relax and yes. enjoy and chat after dinner. Yeah. Which is where the speeches come in perfectly. Okay. So that's why you want to have them after the dinner. Absolutely. I get that now. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I would often have a bride saying to me, well, my dad is so nervous and he just wants to get it out of the way to begin with. I'd Absolutely. say you hear that all the time. We do indeed. <laughs> we do indeed. But um, it is and it is always funny and we have a great laugh with our couples afterwards. You know, yeah. the, the dad needs to speak before yeah. dinner because he's so nervous, which is fine. And we'll obviously facilitate that. Yes. But then, you know, dad gets a gets a nice few applauses and a bit of laughing and so <laughs> on get, and banter going with the guests. And all of a sudden we're 40 minutes in. <laughs> so, you know, even the most nervous people yeah. uh, tend to tend to gain a bit of traction yeah, and yeah, confidence yeah. when they get going. And tell me, um, Ty, because I talk to my couples about this all the time. How long do you think uh, the speeches should be? How long so should somebody speak for? Um, in an entirety, they should be about half an hour to 40 minutes. Yes. That's um, 
now families and friends you know all the dynamics are differently and how many speakers you have yes but um half an hour to 40 minutes is, yeah. is the optimum and do you think people start getting bored after that N- through no fault of anyone's, you will lose a certain amount of yes. your audience anyway. Yeah. And that's purely down to they're having so much fun at their table. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, yeah. so you can't, um, you won't keep all of your audience captive throughout the throughout the whole event. And that's yeah. regardless of however long your speeches are. And have you ever, because <laughs> I have, <laughs> so I'm going to speak for me. Have you ever gone, would you ever stop talking? Because you're not funny. It's some people try and get up and be a comedian. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, I can tell you when you hear the same joke, you know, 10, <laughs> ten times a month. <laughs> After the fifth time, you don't uh, you don't express yourself as much. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. But, um, you know, it's it's when people stand up and two speakers are on. So the say the two dads have spoken first. Yes. And we're already 40 minutes in. Right. And then the groom stands up and by by the most part, the groom speeches are, you know, normally only about 10 minutes. Yes. Because the dads have thanked so many people. He knows the best man or the bride's going to thank. So he has a limited, yes. he has a nice limited speech. So he doesn't, he doesn't have the worst job on the day. Yeah. Um, but, you know, at that stage, you're still 40, 45 minutes in. Yeah. And then you're going to have the longer speech of the best man. Right. Meaning that all of a sudden you're an hour and five, an hour and 10 minutes in. Yeah. And no matter where you put that in the duration of your day, whether it's at the start or at the end that's an awful long time to try and keep your guests um, engaged yeah engaged and entertained yeah um yeah. if it's at the end of the meal they just want to get another drink and start the party yes and just you know have a have a good time yeah. if it's at the start of the meal um they're hungry yes do you know it's um it's very it's very very hard to know it is hard and you know what i do notice once the speeches finish there's like everyone's gone to the toilet Absolutely. and you're trying to serve a meal if that's at the beginning of the meal so it's a nightmare that's it is a, a nightmare. nightmare for you guys. It is a nightmare. Yeah. And um, you know, you know your speeches are too long if you have to stop in the middle and give all your guests a toilet break. <laughs> that's that's the gauge if your speeches were too long. <laughs> and Tag, do, do you know what they should be saying in their speeches? Like there's there's certain things that each person has to cover, you know? It varies massively <clears throat> from from wedding to wedding. Yeah. Um, normally, the groom will thank the bridesmaids. He'll thank his own best men. He'll obviously thank his parents, tell a past story of the bride, a current story of the bride, and then, you know, talk about their fabulous future together. Yes. And that generally is the whole groom speech. Yeah. Um, the fathers will do something similar where they'll talk about the past of their of their child the current couple and then their plans for the future. Yes. And then the best man gets free reign to say what, yeah. whatever he wants. Oh my God, <laughs> I'll tell you. Um, but they're not, they're not supposed to talk about previous um, people. Definitely not. But sometimes not. they do, Tyke. Never in Tankerstown. No, I don't Never believe that. Never in Tankerstown. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to mention the exes. Never. Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Well, that kind of brings on a whole other level of entertainment <laughs> when that happens. <laughs> and it's great for photographs. Ty, I think we've covered uh, uh, everything. I, I mean, I'm very happy with that little conversation, little conversation, that 40 something minute conversation. <laughs> delighted, absolutely delighted. Ty, it was absolutely lovely, lovely, lovely to sit down here and talk to you on my Wedding to Wednesday podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Lovely to be here. Thank you so much.